That's okay. Let me introduce myself. So my name's Andrew Gillespie, and I'm based at Doverbrooks. Doverbrooks is an independent school in Oxford, and I've been there for many years, and one of my roles is academic director. So I oversee students' progress, uh, oversee their studies, and their progression to university. So we, we have in our sixth form, we have about 420 students. So every year we have about 200 plus students going to university. And most of them are in the UK. We have a few who go abroad, uh, go to America, but most are going to the UK. So I'm going to try and share what I know um, between us. I'm sure we know lots between us. So uh, I'll just give some advice about getting into top universities generally, uh, and then specifically talk a little bit about economics and, and management and business. But you know, just to give you the overview of the whole thing. Uh, if you've got questions, ask them as we go. And I will try and answer what I can. If I can't answer, we will take it away and find out. Um, so I'm going to go through, you know, I, I don't know how, how familiar you are, but I'll, I'll start with the process as a whole, just so we understand the whole thing. And then we'll focus in on the most competitive and, and what they're looking for. Is that okay so far? Yeah? Okay. Good, we can talk, it's okay. So um, you're going to see this word UCAS quite a lot, uh, and UCAS is, is the main system that processes all the applications. So really, at the end of today, uh, if you haven't come across that word before, just take it away with you, and UCAS has got huge amounts of information for you, and anything you want to find out more about, check out, it'll be through that site. So I, I'll give you more information on this as we go, but essentially all applications go into UCAS, and then go to the universities. It's the hub. And in the UK, you are going to choose five. So you're going to nominate five universities. And you're going to enter into your online form. And there is no preference. You're not choosing an order at this stage. So, so you don't, when I applied years, many, many years ago, you had to say, that's my first and my second and so on. Now you just put in the five names and they're put in alphabetical, and at this stage you're not telling a university that you want that one to that one or which one you prefer. Each university gets the application, they don't know where else you've applied, so there's no competition between the universities at this stage. They just look at what they've got. Um, you're going to apply usually for the same sort of course, because or you're going to write, as we'll see in a minute, you're going to write your application saying why you want to do that course. And that's quite difficult to do if one of them is economics and one of them is medicine and one of them is French. And that's quite difficult to have a, an application that somehow is right for all of those. It also suggests that you haven't really thought through what you want to do with your life. So a lot today will be about preparing, researching, thinking, to work out what it is you want to do, and your application should be focused on that. So generally, you're choosing five universities, but one course. So, so usually, there are exceptions, but usually what you're saying is, I am interested in economics, and I want to study that at university A, B, C, D, E. Now, it may be that you're interested in economics there, but at that one, it's economics and something else. That's okay, there's still enough consistency. Sometimes you find universities <laughs> offer a very unusual course, and you really just cannot find it in many other places. Uh, King's has one called War Studies. There's not a lot of universities where you, so, so there you might find that one does sit a little bit different, but the, there should be a, a, you know, the, you're going to, you, the, the student is gonna have to write about one statement that somehow covers those choices, okay? So it's a, it would be unusual if one minute you want to do economics, but the next minute you want to do psychology and the next minute you want to do law, that suggests you haven't really thought what it is you want to do. Uh, so focus on the course. 
there is a tendency, and I understand it, to, to focus on universities. Really, your thinking should start with what's the course that I'm trying to do, and that what's the course that I'm aiming for, and then find the universities that match that. Okay? Um, so, there's no preference stated, and you're going to complete one form, and that form will go to five institutions. Say again? Uh, it says that uh, my daughter is interested in economy and business management. Yeah. So, how should we do? Well, uh, that's again a very good question. You, you may find, and you will find, some courses that are economics and management. That, that's okay. Uh, and you might find five places that are economics and management. But, they are different things. So if you had economics, economics, management, 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 that suggests she's not quite sure where she's going. So does that make sense? So if you find economics and management is offered at five places, fine, to totally logical, because you can write about both in the personal statement. If you're choosing them as separate things, well, they are different. So which, which is the one you really want to do? Does that make any sense? Yeah, well, we'll come back. And, uh, sorry, thank you for these. It's useful. Okay, so the, the process itself. Um, so our upper six students, so we've got our 200 and something upper six students, they are now completing their UCAS forms. They're, submit, they're putting together their applications. So technically, they have until January next year, okay? <clears throat> But most schools will want it kind of out of the way and finished as much as possible around now. For the most competitive, for something like Oxford, Cambridge, for medicine, you have to submit it by October anyway. So generally, you're aiming for September, October of that year to apply for the following year's entry. If it isn't medicine, Oxford and Cambridge, you, you have until January, but the school will normally want, want it. And to be honest, <clears throat> you want it out of the way, so again, you can focus on your studies. Uh, the thinking about UCAS or university should be happening as far ahead as you can, and should certainly be happening in the lower sixth, in year 12 in the UK, and over that summer, so that when you go into the second year of sixth form in the UK, it, the form's ready to go as much as possible. Does that make sense? If you have a crisis of what is am I doing with my life, what should I be applying for, you can leave it till January. You could apply after January, but they don't have to consider it. So, so January is their cutoff point. Okay. But really, the aim is to go as far back as you can and to start thinking as early as you can. So I don't know what years people are in, but, uh, um, you, you know, even year 11, really, you, you should be thinking about kind of where I want to go to. So I've got until January. You send off your form. We'll look at that in a minute. It goes to UCAS. UCAS forward it on, and the universities will look at it, and they will take their time to look at it. Some are incredibly fast. Some, it'll go, and you'll have a reply within days. And others will sit on it for weeks or months. you just got to not panic. It, it depends on the university system. Some universities, it all goes to a central office, and they've got, they just follow a, an algorithm, pretty much. Very, it's very kind of bump. Others, it goes to individuals in a department, and they spend time looking at it. Some universities say, we will offer in batches. So we'll offer some by September, some by October, some by November, and they just do it in chunks. Others say, we want to gather lots in before we do anything. So it just depends on the, the university and its admission system. Don't panic if... All your friends are hearing and you're not, or you've heard from four, but not, you know, somewhere like LSE is, for us, is notoriously slow. It, it takes weeks and weeks and weeks before you're anything, or months. So you don't worry. But at some point, they will come back and say, here's the offer, or we're going to reject you. Um, out of five, if you got a rejection, okay, that, that might be all right. Two, possible. Um, but really, your application and the advice you've got should be good enough whereby you are expecting offers from the, the vast majority. Because otherwise, you've misjudged something. You've misjudged the level of the university compared to your standard. You've misjudged your, your personal statement. You've misjudged something. So a rejection is okay. Uh, 
technically, you know, four rejections is okay. But if you've got your application right, you would normally be expected to get most to give you an offer because you, you, you've clearly put yourself in the right kind of game. And once that happens, then, then you get, that now it's back to you. Now you are gonna make a choice. And you've got hopefully, let's say five offers. At this point, you are going to express a preference. And you're gonna say, well, that one is my firm. I'm definitely gonna to go to that one if I get the grades. And if I don't, then this one is my insurance. This one is, I didn't do as well as I'd hoped, but I can still get enough to get to this one. So you are going to commit at this stage, but you're not committed at this stage anywhere until here. And this can be quite late. This can be kind of April, May, whatever, is when you're finally saying, that's what I want to do. Now, that's sort of important. Sorry. You make your choices. Top choice, second choice. You go and do your exams. You get your results on the, in the UK the third Thursday of August. And then hopefully on that day, everything's sorted. So as a school, we have results day. Some students are abroad, but most come in. And what we hope on that day is there's the results. And actually, they, they know the night before whether they've got into that university. So, so interestingly, results day in the UK is not what it was. In, in the past, people would turn up desperate to know how many A stars they got. These days, they've already seen the evening before that they're in and they've got into their university. So they turn up very relaxed because they know they're in. But so they will know where they're at. And hopefully at that point, it's all sorted. Uh, if it isn't sorted, then you've got a system called clearing where you can start looking for any vacancies that universities have. And again, the school will, will support you if you need it. It's not, it's not that common, but the, the school will support you if you need it. But basically, you get your grades, you get, you get in and you start university, in, depending on the university, but sort of October. Now, the point is, <clears throat> as I say, we're, we're looking at five. And our advice is to make sure you have some sort of spread. Because somewhere in the process, you're going to have to choose two. And you're going to say, that's my firm. That, that's perfectly logical. Because that says, if I do as well as I expect, or even a bit better, I will go here. And there is now a contract between you and the university. If you get those grades, you're in. If you don't quite do as well as you expected, you have a bad day or whatever, and you end up, let's say, with three A's, then technically you're not in there, but you're still in here. And again, there's a contract that says, they will now take me. So you're safe. You can still go back to this one. They will have wait, they will have looked already, and in some cases they might still give you a place with that because they might have decided it was a tough year or there's enough in your application to strengthen it. So sometimes you might still get in with that. But what you know is that you're definitely into your insurance, um, and the whole point of this system is in safety net. If you submitted an application that had all of those and they're all the same, you haven't got an insurance. So you can do that. You can say, right, I'm just going to go for it. And I'm applying to five universities that, that are likely to offer me this. The risk of that is you've got no safety net. Because if you've got three A's, potentially nobody's going to take you. So it depends on your thirst for risk. And that's the student's choice. Parents are often an influence. We as a school will advise, we, we make sure parents are involved all the way through. It's a student's choice, but we make sure everybody knows what's happening. If a student wants to do that, they're perfectly, you know, that's their choice. We would usually be saying, actually, oh, you might not have quite this spread, but normally this, this, we would say put some spread in there because that's the point of the system. Is that okay? Ultimately, all of this, is down to the student's application, normally with the parents involved. Right. Um, making your application, I won't go through all of this, but basically it's a long form with lots of information, personal details, you know, things about your education. Um, so you're going to put in here all of these sorts of things, contact details, work experience, if it's relevant, if it, if it says something that's of interest to the university. Um, if, if it's completely irrelevant, don't bother. Um, English language skills, they might want to see what qualifications you've got. And this is the bit we're going to talk about. This is where you start talking about 
uh, your reason for applying and putting in your choices. But basically, a lot of background stuff. So, so that's a bit fiddly in terms of what to put in what box, but the school will advise you or UCAS will advise you. There's lots of information to help you do that. You're going to send it off. And in most cases, the decision about whether to offer or not will come from the left. In some cases, it will come from the right as well. So it depends on the university and it depends on the course, what it is they're going to look for. But all the universities will see the left. Some might require the right. Okay, so we're going to talk um, quite a bit about personal statement. Now, that's your chance as a student to sell yourself, essentially. Qualifications are obviously what you've already achieved and what you're you hope to achieve, that will determine whether you get an offer, and then if you achieve it, you'll get in. But they're going to look at what you've already done, they're going to look at what you're expected to do, and then make you an offer, and then you have to go and do it to get the place. Okay? Importance of that is what have you done already? Okay? So if you're doing GCSEs, IGCSEs, Thai curriculum, whatever it is, whatever you're doing, now and the qualifications you get now that will be the that will be the known on the form if you come to the uk and do a levels or the equivalent here that's an unknown <laughs> they don't know what you're going to get they can see what you're predicted but you haven't yet got it so in the uk gcse's matter because you've got gcse's and there's a grade listed so if any of you are doing is anyone doing gcse's igcse's okay if you've got it so you know I know it's obvious, but the better you do, the better it is because it just sits on a form and you've achieved it already. And if I'm already looking at a student who's got 10 A stars or 5 A stars, whatever it is, I know, I know something about them. Okay? If they haven't, it's not the end of the world. I'll look at the other stuff, but it just makes life easier. So qualifications we'll talk about. And then reference is going to come from the school. Okay? And again, just think about... That. Why do I want to think about that? Um, we will work with a student for who joins us. At, they may have been with us before, but a lot of students join, join my school for sixth form. So we start with them in September. They have a personal tutor who works with them for the whole of the first year, goes into the second year, and that personal tutor has got a really, really, really good insight into that student. So the reference that they can write is going to be very focused because they've worked with them one-to-one -one for you know, four terms, well over a year. The reference, you know, the reference will support an application, will add value to an application or not. Um, what you're not there to do as parents or students is put pressure on anybody to write a certain type of reference. That's not on. Um, but clearly, you know, what you're looking for is that the school or, or whoever you're working with knows that student well to, to, to support the application. And, and really, it is about supporting and highlighting the strengths of the student not getting it wrong, not exaggerating, not over-promising, because the university will never trust your references again, but making sure that you are highlighting why that student is right for that course. That again means that link between that referee and the student, and probably parents as well, is really important, because we, we need to understand that student, that course, and why that link is so strong and good, and we've advised you probably to do that course. If we don't think that course is right for you, we should be telling you, because otherwise the reference doesn't work. So we're looking for what you need to do well and, and to try and bring that out. These will, say, depend on what you do. I mean, clearly, if you're doing you know, drama, music, something, art, you're, you're going to need a portfolio. And in some cases, for those kind of courses, which we're not talking about today, this could be more important than, than A-levels. You know, what your portfolio does is really significant. Um, for the sorts of courses we might be talking about, um, admissions tests and interviews. Um, there aren't many interviews in the UK these days, and that just puts more and more emphasis on this, because there are very few universities or courses that are interviewing. I mean, things like medicine they will, but for most economics and management type courses, they're not going to interview you. So you've either, you either get an offer from that or you don't. Um, admissions tests tend to be for medicine and law and so on so or oxford and cambridge if, if, apart from that they're not used very widely um but 
it, you know, if you've got one, then obviously you need to do the preparation for that and, and the score for that will count as well. So we'll come on to that as we go. Uh, where are we? Okay, so if you walk away with one thing, just walk away with www.ucas.com. Okay, it's usually been pretty good. It's getting better and better and better. Uh, there are other systems. I don't know if, if what schools you're at, but, but we have a system called Unifrog that quite a lot of schools use. And that that's, a, that's, that's pretty good as well. It provides other advice. And partly that competition has made them get better. So I think UCAS is, is, is a very good source. If you spend time on it, so it's got a lot of things. So very simply, you know, you can just search here and get straight to universities and links to websites and find out about virtual open days and all sorts of things. It, it's, it's probably your, your, your main source. Um, they've got stuff like, if you're not sure, you know, you can start putting in things here. They've got quizzes and things, careers quizzes. There's, there's stuff to help you work out for yourself or your parents to help you work out what it is that you're going for. Um, and as I say, there's things like this. So, so it, it's actually a very big site. There's more to it than you might think. And it's worth just playing around a bit. And again, you know, the earlier you start, the, the, the better. You can then go into this and, and you know, I'm not sure if I want, I'm not sure I can read that one, but I'm not sure if I want to study accounting. What is it? What's the difference between accounting and business? Well, there's information pages here on UCAS again that will tell you. Okay? So just dedicate some time to clicking and whatever. And if you're not sure, I mean, some of you will know, you know, I met a student this morning, it's medicine, that's, that's all they want to do. Boom. Um, fine. Okay, they're, they're lucky. That sort of career choice, some people do know from a very early age. We have a lot of students in our sixth form who, who don't know. They've got all sorts of talents and abilities, and they're not sure. And it might be economics, or it might be management, or it might be international relations, or it could be, and that's fine. You know, the, the, the lower sixth, year 11, year 12, is a time to explore that. And, and again, I don't know what you, you do here, but in our curriculum, we, we've got sessions dedicated to just explore this stuff and do this and see what, where it leads you. Click on some of these and see whether anything excites you or not because it, it might take you down a path. There's so many degree courses that, that we may never have heard of, and, and it's worth just kind of getting stuck into that. We've got students going on to, oh, I'm going to make it up, well, well over 100 different degree courses. You know, the, the, the choice out there is extraordinary, and there are some very niche ones and, and so on. So it, it just, just bears time, I think is probably my uh, um, other message. UCAS.com and use your time. Okay, so I'm going to put my application into any university, but the most, the most competitive. I'm going to need the right qualifications, the right subjects, the right predictions, the right other, and a strong personal statement. Given that, and, and that, again, is the point. Where, where are you pitching yourself? So where are your five, and what are, they, what are they looking for? If, realistically, you're going to get, um, you know, you're going to do well, you're going to get three A's, that's good but you're picturing yourself at universities that are A star, A star, A star, then, then you may get an offer, but it's high risk. You, you've just got to have sensible conversations with yourself, with your school, about what, what it is you're actually likely to get. And that will change over time. You, by, by April, May, you might be in a different position than you were in September. And that, again, is why a spread is quite useful. Hopefully you've gone that way, but if something has happened that's upset you and you, you might have gone that way. So the spread is just, it's just, depends on your attitude to risk. It's just keeping, keeping some options open. But there's, there is no point. If you are a straight B student, and you probably wouldn't be here because you're probably looking for, but if you were a straight B student and you apply only to A star universities, you're probably going to get five rejections. That, that's not, to me, a sensible strategy. Put some in as aspirations but just make sure you're pitching it right. So looking at the typical offers from university is important to, to get this right in relation to this. And again, ultimately, don't listen to anything I say. Go to UCAS. But more important than UCAS is just go to the university website. Okay, It's got huge amounts of information. They're desperate for the best students. If you're not sure... You know, I'm doing, my school means I do five GCSEs. Is that enough? Okay, contact the university. I'm going to get, you know, A star or 99992 because I never have loved chemistry. Is that a problem for economics? 
ask the university. They, they'll talk, they're very keen to talk because they want the best students. Okay, this is Oxford. They, they normally have, certainly the, the universities you'll be looking at will normally have very good international admissions pages. They'll tell you what qualifications they accept and what they don't, and they'll give you criteria. They'll tell you the, the IELTS level they need or equivalent, et cetera, et cetera, it's there. So for example, Oxford say what they don't, they don't accept M6, okay? If I go to UCL, UCL say the minimum for any course is ABB. Check which course, something like law, it will be higher. But the minimum for any course is ABB. And they would accept one year of a bachelor degree at our university. So if you want to know, and, and it'll vet, so the point is each university, each course can set its own admissions. You, you need to spend the time looking. So I can't tell you about every management and economics course in, in the UK. There are thousands, and there is not one policy. And ultimately, it depends on the person leading the admissions for that course and, and the, the type of applications. Okay. Is that all right so far? Okay. What's the website we've got to remember? Right. That's the first thing. It's about two things, three things, if we're lucky, we're going to remember today. UCAS.com is one. Okay. Second one, possibly. And I, you, you may know this already, so I apologize. Um, there are a group of universities in the UK called Russell Group. Do we know them? We heard that? Okay. You may come across this a lot. Lots of schools say, you know, 80% of our students go to Russell Group and whatever. It, it, it's got this sort of um, mystique. In, some people talk about Russell Group as if there's something quite incredible and amazing, okay? Um, and some people kind of judge schools by how many go to Russell Group or, or in the UK, sometimes it's my son goes to a Russell Group University and I'm a very proud father, this sort of thing. Um, Russell Group Universities are generally very, very good. It does not mean that non-Russell Group Universities are not good. There are excellent universities out there. Russell Group, I believe, I might have got this wrong, but it comes from a group of universities that were very, very research focused. And their, their emphasis was on, was, was on doing the research. Now, the risk of that potentially is you focus on the research, not the teaching and learning. I'm not saying they do, but there is a risk that you're research based. A university that is very focused on teaching and learning, but maybe doesn't put, in the past, didn't put as much money into the research side, wouldn't be a Russell Group. It doesn't mean they're not good universities, okay? However, the, re so the reason I'm showing you this is because of this, not because it's Russell Group. But what they did do was that Russell Group went around their universities saying, tell me about the, the subjects that are required for, for the degrees, okay? So if someone wants to study economics at your university in the Russell Group, what subjects are required, okay? And they've produced this website called Informed Choices. If you haven't been there, that would be my second bit of advice. So I've got UCAS. I've started exploring universities. I've started thinking about subjects, if I don't know already, what degree I might want to study. But I just want to check a few things out. And I want to check that if, I'm in, if I am doing A-levels, that I'm doing the right A-levels, OK? Again, if you're not sure what to study, you click that and you can play around for hours and there's lots of great information. I'm going to say I do not want to, you know, I'm here because I want to study economics or management or something. I want to click this. So I know what I want to study. But what I'm trying to find out is are the certain th subjects I have, to get my application right, are the certain subjects I must study, okay? These here, if they're listed here, it, sorry, sorry, there's a list above it. There, there might be some that are essential. And what that means is, obviously, you know, if you want to study maths as a degree, it will say it is essential to study maths A level, right? There are others where they're saying, okay, it's nothing's essential, but some are preferred. So we won't talk about law much today, but law, most schools in the UK do not offer law. So most applicants have never studied law before. So that is not an essential requirement. There is an A level in law, but you don't have to have done that. So for something like law, all they're interested in, not all, but what they're interested in is, what are, you, what are your essay writing subjects like? What are your research skills like? And those can come from all sorts of things here. These are some of them. But there are other A-levels that could demonstrate the same thing. These are just guidelines. If we take the ones you're interested in, business, okay, there are no essential subjects. You can apply for business or management 
and you, there's no A-level. So there is an A-level business. I, I teach A-level business. Not every school in the UK does A-level business. So if you've done it, lovely. But if you haven't done it, it's not the end of the world. Okay, same with economics. So they quite, they say, look, it might be helpful, you can't read this, but this is accounting, business, economics, English language, politics, maths, sociology. These are all quite useful, but they're not essential. Okay? I would say business for me, um, certainly if you've studied the A-level business, I think when you get to university, the maths content does tend to increase. So maths is quite useful. It's not essential. Maths is quite useful. A-level business is good because it gives you an overview. But if you've never studied it before, you can still do business and management perfectly happily. Management studies, again, probably can't read those. Sorry, it says accounting and business, but nothing essential. So if, if you're looking down the business route, there's nothing you have to have studied before. There's no requirement. If you start looking at, oh, I didn't put that. Um, if you put economics, again, there's no requirement you've studied A-level economics. My personal experience, I did economics at university, is I, I hadn't studied A-level economics and I wish I had. So if you have got a choice, it's a useful because it just gives you a background. Um, what I would look for for economics is, is a maths, but I mean, the, the economics courses at competitive universities tend to be very maths based. So I would look for a strong maths content, absolutely for economics and ideally for business. Okay, just because there's going to be stats and things in there. I would, for the ones you're thinking about, again, just be, spend the time researching. There are thousands of degrees. Someone says, I want to study business. It's like, okay, great. Well, what's that? Is it, is it business studies? Is it business management? Is it business and finance? Is it hospitality business? Is it HR, human resources? Is it marketing? You've got so many variations which might need slightly different emphasis. It, it, you're opening up a, I, I love business and studying business at university, but you're opening up this massive range of choices and very sometimes very niche ones, you know, the, the business or digital business or business and information literacy, you know, all sorts of different ones. So it's going to take time to really work out what you need. If my advice generally, but I'm probably, I'm not saying follow this, is if, if I choose human resources type ones or marketing, I, I'm beginning to narrow because I'm going to leave potentially with a human resources degree or a marketing degree, which is beginning to say I'm going down that route. Some people know that's, that's where they want to go. They, they know it's that bit. A lot of people are not sure at this stage and, and therefore keeping a broad business degree or management degree, you can still do modules in marketing, finance, and whatever. Uh, and you can probably begin to specialize in years two and three. But if you're not, if you're not committed to a, a business area, then just, I personally would say just keep it broad and you can work it out once you get there or, or kind of later on. Um, but do think about, I mean, example, again, these courses could be very, what, what people mean by business or what universities mean by business will, will vary from one university to another. You know, and some universities just rebrand. I mean, management seems to have, oh, management sounds, that sounds higher paid than business. So some universities are just rebranding it and taking what was a business course, now calling it management. Um, it, it, it's, you've got to do the painful stuff of, of looking at the course and seeing what is actually on that course at that university. It's not straightforward. So I can't stand here and tell you a business degree looks like this because it depends where you're studying it. How is it assessed? You know, is it assessed through written exams? Is it assessed mainly at the end of year three? Is it assessed through um, coursework? Is it assessed through presentations? That will vary enormously from university to university. Is it, um, are, are you building up marks through the three years so you've got an ongoing total to see how you're doing? Some people love that because I can measure my progress and decide where to focus my energies. Or does it really hang on written exams at the end of three years? You've just got to kind of, unfortunately, kind of ex explore this stuff and see what's going on. Um, is it, so, so, so you're talking about, I think, about your daughter. You know, is it economics, single honours, or is it economics? I did economics and history. I did, I did a dual honours degree. So, so you, can, you can still mix and match as long as there's a theme running through it. But that depends on your interests and, again, how, where you want to leave at the end. Is it a three-year course? Is it a, a course where you've got a year out? Do you want a year out? 
So a relation of mine did, did a year in France, you know, did business and French, did a year out in France, left with business degree, but a language qualification at the same time. So there's, there's options there. Um, this again is just an example of, I just started, this is, I think we got, you know, the first page of about 20, you know, is it business and economics? Is it business and management? Is it business economics and marketing? Is it business entrepreneurship? So does business to me mean startups? Okay, there are some universities that focus on startup. That's quite interesting. Or does it mean the management of people? Or does it mean the promotion of products? Or does it mean all of those? What, what, what does business actually mean? And that depends on the university's interpretation of it. So I know I'm not I'm probably not telling you what you want to hear, which is, right, that's the answer. What I'm telling you is, it, there are different views, different interpretations of this sort of thing. So I'll give, just give you two examples, just from because I'm based in Oxford. Two universities in Oxford. One is the University of Oxford. The other is Oxford Brooks. Okay. University of Oxford is old, very famous, very high in league tables. Oxford Brooks is younger. Can't remember how much younger it is, um, and does a more a wider range of I can say modern, but modern subjects. Business at Brooks, um, so actually I've taught on uh, business at Brooks. Business at Brooks tends to be about solving business problems. Again, there's all sorts of varieties. There's hundreds of courses you could do. But the, the approach tends to be, am I building the skills that you need to go into business? Can I present? Can I work with people? Can I, can I solve problems? Can I analyze data? And, and it's very, you know, it's, it's project-based. You're doing modules. You're collecting marks for modules as you go. You, you can start to see how the progress is going over the three years. You can choose all massively flexible on the modules. So if I start to like HR, I do more of that. So Brooks is enterprise, real business, employability. At the end of that, they want you to go into business and be able to, to get on with it. Okay? This is Oxford University of Oxford, economics and management. So you can't do straight management. You can't do business at Oxford, University of Oxford. You can only do economics and management, okay? What do we want? We want to study the organization of businesses. We want independence and flexibility. We're going to solve problems. So that's okay. That, that's all pretty cool. Um, sorry, I think I've got it here. So uh, I've lost the thing. Uh, I'll find a slide in a minute. What they will say, though, is if you're studying economics and management at the University of Oxford is this is an academic subject. You are going to study the research. You're going to study the journals and you're going to do written exams. And that's what they're testing. Oxford Brooks has that, but it's got projects and scenarios and business simulations. So I'm not saying one's right or wrong, but within this heading of business and management, You've got completely different, inter very different interpretations of what your three years are going to be like and how you're going to be assessed. And if you're, you know, if we're talking to the student, it's which one is right for you. How, you know, what's your, what, what do you want to leave at the end of it? Okay, so we're thinking about the courses. We've got to think about the universities. Again, you can go on to UCAS and start to look at that. Um, you can put in some lovely filters. You can start saying. You know, but this, this is what I put in for. What did I put in? I put in business or something, and I put in the 23 starts, and these are the universities in the UK that have a business course. There's quite a lot of them, okay? And within each of them, they've probably got several, several to several hundred business courses, okay? So you want to start filtering. One filter, so you, how, do, you know, how do I get that down to a manageable list? Well, um, the, this, is a, this is a UCAS slide. Um, style, do I want, you know, when I went to university, we had first year exams just to get through, nothing for two years, and then we went into exam halls at the end. So everything depended on about one week's worth of exams, okay? If you like exams, that suits you, okay? Others will have continuous assessment, coursework, projects, and so on and so on, which suits your style of learning and your stress levels and whatever, whatever. Um, location, okay. Uh, I like, I am happy to be on a university campus miles from anywhere else. I'm happy to be with 15,000 students 
in a bubble miles from anywhere else, yeah, or I want to be in a city centre. What, what, what's the style of place that's going to suit you? Do you want countryside? Do you want, do you want, well, in Oxford we talk about town and gown. So the gown is the, in the old days was the university um, and, and town is the city and they, they kind of live together. So Oxford is town and gown united. But even, even that town and gown, you know, Oxford has got all sorts of traditions. When you first join the university, you go to the library, the Bodleian Library, and you have to kind of swear that you, this, this oath from several hundred years ago, promising that you will never burn down the library and, you know, uh, and so on. Uh, I remember my first piece of work was marked in Latin. Uh, I had no idea what was going on, but someone returned my essay, you know, with comments in Latin. So some people love that and other people go, that isn't me, actually. I, I, that, doesn't, that style doesn't suit me. So style, location. Size of university, do you want 20,000 people or do you want 5,000? Um, living costs and, and, and employability. So there's a whole range of, of things which will, you can filter plus, again, standard. You know, what, where am I pitching? Am I, am I A star AA? Is that my, out of my five, is that my midpoint? Or, or is it A star A star? Where, where's my midpoint? So you can filter on grades to get that massive list of red dots down a bit. The other feature, I don't know how good this is, but the other feature that, that they've introduced on UCAS is, is um, uh, chat buddy things. So, so you can talk to students who are actually at the university about their courses and things. And again, that's quite a, it tells you where they're from and it tells you what they're studying. So this one was for law, but you can just kind of ask them questions. So they're, they're, made, they're probably good ambassadors. Um, do watch, this is for law, but do watch this sort of thing. Um, well, sorry, watch all sorts of things. So for law, Typically A star A, A, okay. <clears throat> At least two A-level subjects from UCL's list of subjects. So again, you're, you're into a world of different universities doing different things. And, you know, if I'm advising students, I make sure that they write out for me and normally print off these entrance pages for the universities because it needs checking and double checking. What you don't want to do is get caught out that you've met every requirement except your IELTS is 0.5 off, or you haven't got a six in, in English language or something, okay? If in doubt, contact the university. But this sort of thing, you know, this university, UCL, which is a great university, has a list of subjects that it prefers. It doesn't mean they don't count anything else, but it means, that normally for them, it means two of the three should be from this list. Now, the list is enormous, right? So I'll just, you know, it's ancient history, art, biology, business, whatever. So it's, a, it's an enormous list, but I can't remember what's not on it. But you know, if you were doing media, photography, textiles, I'm making those up, but you might find that two of those are not on that list. And then even if you've got A stars, you, you, you've got an issue. So check, 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 double check. Okay, um, uh, again, it's all blurred, but let me just give you an example. So if I was working with a student, I'd be looking at solid. What's the what's the midpoint? What's what are you likely? If it, if it turns out as expected, or with a little bit of a good day, what what are your options? What are your aspirational ones? So let's say we've got one or two midpoint, one or two aspirationals, and then what's your safety net? And I would get students to so for example, sorry you can't read this very well. This is for management. Manchester three A's. So I, I'm an A-grade student. This is where I'm pitching myself. I've got a couple of aspirations. I'm going to give it a go at, what am I going to give it a go at? Uh, business management with a year in industry, A star AA. So I reckon I've got a chance of that. I could have a couple of them, okay? But I've got a year in industry, so I've got to make sure I'm happy to take a year out. Um, and I've got, I don't know, what have I got? Okay, well, just as an example, I could go for business analytics because that's a much lower offer. But business analytics will clearly be very, very data maths driven, whereas business management with a year in industry will probably be very different modules. So I've got to be careful. I know what the content is. But the point is, get, start getting your list, have a long list, make sure that the student is writing down in detail entrance requirements, and then we're starting to match. So, I find with students, it's a long kind of almost negotiation process. That's what we start with. Then we work out from teachers' predictions. 
then we see how things are going, then we talk with the family, and we're trying to just bring this list together from that to get it to, to the five and to agree on that. Ultimately, it's the student's choice, but what, what's the right mix and what's the degree of risk involved? Okay. What are the top universities in the UK? Okay, what's the answer to that? Someone tell me the top universities in the UK? So what would you say? That's probably, maybe that's why you're here. Okay, answer, it depends who you ask. Uh, it depends what course you're interested in and it depends what you're measuring, okay? There are lots of books out there, websites, guidebooks, experts telling you the best universities in the UK. Um, so I'll, I'll show you a list, but it is really important again to think about what, what you want to study. You're interested in economics and management. If you came to me and said, I'm interested in communication, that is not the University of Oxford. They don't do it. Uh, if you're interested in, I don't know, graphic design, that's not the University of Oxford. They don't do it. So you've just got to match. And sometimes universities that you haven't heard of particularly are actually leading experts in particular fields. You know, you start getting into computer games design or something, and, and, and you've got universities that you might not know. Of. What I'm showing you here, so we've got UCAS.com, we've got the Russell Group Informed Choices, and we've got this one. This is a newspaper, The Guardian, and they produce a, a, a league table, interactive league table system on their, on their website, okay? Now, this is the best, when we say what's the best, it depends what you measure. So this is based on these scores, and I don't even know what the algorithm is, but there'll be a weighting of these scores. Are you satisfied with the course? Are you satisfied with the teaching? Are you satisfied with feedback? What's the ratio of students to staff? What's the spend for students? What's the entry requirements? How much value do we add? How many students go on to get firsts or so on? Who's got a job after 15 months, etc.? So they're, they're very good things to measure. Whenever we look at league tables, whether it is universities or schools or anything else, just be very, very careful, okay? For example, some universities uh, allegedly will kind of almost sit their students down and say, right, we're gonna fill this in and it's really important. And you know, if you give me a hundred here, it's really good news. Other universities will just let students fill it in or not fill it in. It just depends. I could be, I could have a ratio of 12 to one student and the teaching and the focus on learning and the interest in pedagogy is huge and the contact time is massive. I could have a 10, I'm not saying we do, but I could have a 10 to one and the contact time is pretty low. Or the, interest, the, the, the teaching is actually done by people who are more interested in their research. So, so be careful of stark numbers. Just take this to take Oxford, for example. Um, you know, it's got a low student to staff ratio. Why? Because you don't have, you have some big lectures, but you have a lot of uh, seminars or one-to-one -one tutorials. And that's, for some people, that's beautiful. It's, it's, that's what you want. But the contact time, you know, is less because one-to-one -one tutorials you, you, it's, it are very labor intensive. So you're doing a lot on your own when you, you know oxford requires you or these universities require you to study a lot on your own and then bring it together for some sort of pretty intense moments for some students that's exactly what they want and for others they maybe want a bit more guidance and, and structure about what they're doing and, and more regular assessment so be careful but the ones you've probably heard of oxford and cambridge st andrews in scotland uh london school of economics um again th these are but I'm in London, you know, my, my daughter's gone to London. It's a particular environment. And for some people, that's fine. And for others, the countryside air uh, and, and not being in a huge city suits, suits them better. Um, do I want a, a university that's very uh, graduate heavy? Or do I want universities mainly undergraduates? Does that balance matter to me? I don't know why it should, but it might. Um, so, but what have we got? Oxford, Cambridge, Durham, Warwick, Imperial Bath, UCL, and so on. So, so those are the kind of your, your big names. If you said business management, you've got a similar list, but the order's beginning to change. So I've still, I've got Oxford, I've got Warwick, LSE, I've got Glasgow, I've got Leeds, I've got UCL. So you can put into this website the degree that you're interested in, and you'll see the order begins to change a bit because universities will have particular specialist areas. 
So for business and management, they're still saying Oxford. Um, but you will get a traditional, strong, very strong, very traditional academic delivery of business and management. Um, what else we got? Warwick. Yeah, and Warwick is, is often very good for, for, for mathematical aspects. It's, it's very much on the, uh, uh, the, the kind of BSC side of things with, with the, the data interpretation. That was law, so that medicine. So, so basically, I'm just sorry, just changing to show you that the list changes according to what you put in. So we've got, we've got those sorts of universities in mind. Possibly all five are there, or possibly two or three of the five are there. How do I get an offer? Uh, Right academic background. First check, form comes in, what, what have you achieved to date? If you've achieved nothing to date, may not be impossible, but making life a bit harder. Uh, if you've achieved lots to date, then let's push you through to the next stage. Um, have you chosen the right subject for the right reasons? Um, what do you think that means? It's pretty obvious, but what, what might be the wrong reasons? Um, I want to study business because I want to set up my own um, uh, online business and become a millionaire by the age of 22. Is an admirable objective. What, what would the university say? They'd probably say, well done, off you go, go and set up your online business and I'll see you when you're a millionaire and you can give a donation to my library. But yeah, you're going to a university to study. It depends on the course a little bit, it goes back to that. But you're going for academic study. They want to know why you want to study it, not why you want to be a great business person. Or I, I think Jack Maher is brilliant, uh, management style is extraordinary, that's who I want to be. Well, okay, off you go. What, what do you want to study? So do you really want to read literature about business or economics? Do you really want to analyze data? Do you really want to look at journals? Do you want to compare economic theory? Or do you just want to make a lot of money? I want to study business because my mother has got a very successful business and I think she's brilliant. That's great, you love your mother, very important. But what do you want to do? So an, an, awful, an awful lot. Sometimes people are, are apparently studying things for completely the wrong reasons. This is why you want to engage in academic study of a subject. Forget your parents for this one. We don't care about your parents. Um, you know, it's, it's what's driving you. And what do you think in three or four years time will you get out of this? Because if you're telling me, you know, you want to go and make a million pounds a, a, a week or something, fine. I'm not sure I'm necessarily going to teach you how to do that. Um, I'm going to teach you how to, how to reflect on things. So we'll talk about this in the personal statement, but right reason. This one, can you survive in an intense and pressured atmosphere? It is. It, it, and it's quite interesting. My, my eldest daughter just, has just gone to university last year. And so, you know, I actually having talked to students for years and years and years about this, to see it for yourself was quite interesting. And you're there, and actually you don't have that many lectures and actually you have a huge reading list and you're given about 50 things to read for next Monday and you're thinking, where the hell do I start and which ones matter and how long should I spend 24 hours a day on this or can I skimp and just do those bits? And that's, these are all quite big questions. And suddenly you're into, and how is this assessed? Because I've just got used to A-levels. I, I know how to write an A-level essay, but I've never studied economics at university before. I don't know what they're looking for. And I'm not going to have a test every week that I'm used to at school. I don't know, what, I don't know how, does this, how does this game work? It's quite scary. However good you are, it's quite scary. And there's a lot of people. So you're not, you know, you're coming from, from most schools and you've got a form tutor or a personal tutor who's there guiding you. And suddenly, no, you know, they're not saying they don't care, but there's, there's not as many people around. You've just got to get on with it. And a university is worried about the emotional pressure. They're worried these days a lot about mental health. I mean, they are really worried about, are you going to be okay? And they're worried about, are you going to drop out? For all sorts of reasons, but they're just worried about, is this person going to be okay with us? In a world of lots going on, 
not a lot of individual time, a lot they've got to do on their own. And so what does that mean? When I look at international students who come to our school and, and other schools, and they come for GCSEs or A-levels or whatever, I am amazed by what they've achieved. At the idea that 14, 15, 16, you go abroad and study and you, you get through it in a different system is, is quite incredible. And I am genuinely always amazed by that. And I'm sure universities as well, that, that is just already evidence that you can get on with stuff and you can survive and you can adapt. And it's, it's a very powerful personal point that often international students who are studying abroad forget to kind of make. They just say, well, I've done it, so what? You know, someone like me went to a very traditional school. I knew nothing about the world. I'd never left this little bubble. And I got to university, it's like, what's going on? I'm completely useless. And, you know, we've got people studying with us who, who have done amazing things before they got anywhere near university. Now, whether you've done that by studying abroad or in other aspects of life, you do try and show that you, you've got resilience, that you, you can kind of cope with stuff. Because I think that does matter to them. Range of interest, we'll talk about this in a minute. Um, range of interest, yes. But range of appropriate, in, I'm, I'm not actually interested in your love for your pet iguana, necessarily. I might be, but I've got to, I've got to work out why it matters to me. As, you know, I'm an admissions tutor. I, my life is all to do with economics. And I'm, I'm worried about the recession, global recession, not necessarily a pet, whatever. Unless there's something there that tells me you're going to be great on my course. Okay, if there's anything, if, so we can work out why caring for my iguana or, or whatever it is, is a, is a very valuable skill, but we've got to make that link. Um, this one we'll come on to. Do you have a depth of interest? Again, is this driven by... I read an idiot's guide to economics and it looked quite good. And, and I read somewhere that economists earn a lot of money. Is that, is that the driving force or is there a bit more to it or a lot more to it? <coughs> what, what does that one mean? Have you studied independently? What, what do we think that one means? No, you do know, you do know, just not telling me. Um, when I began teaching 30 years ago, you got the grades, you got into university. Okay, straightforward. You did well, you got in. It, it, it's not, you know, the world's changed and, and kind of what we're trying to do as educators has changed. When I began, we were just trying to, you know, we'll get you the grades and boom, off you go. Um, the, what, they're in, what they're interested in, as employers are as well, is what are you able to do for yourself? What drives you as a person? What skills have you got to study things for yourself? I work in examining, I set exam papers, I design exams, I mark exams, I award grades. I think things like A-levels are fantastic. But at the end of the day, if you take my A-level, it's my A-level. I've determined what's on the course, I've determined how we answer questions, I've determined how we mark questions, and what you've got to do is do it in the way that I want, and then you can have an A star, okay? And that's all fine and lovely, but you're actually doing, you're following somebody's system that's been designed for you. You're not doing it independently. So what is it that you've ever done that shows me, an admissions tutor, that you independently are interested in economics? What have you ever done? Not A-level economics. What have you done that shows a genuine interest? Not what your mum's done, what your dad's done, da, da, da. what have you done? Have you, if you really love economics, because that's what you're telling me, your first line is, I love economics and my pet iguana, I love them both, they're both fantastic. If you really love them, what have you done about it? Because if you haven't read something, if you haven't spent a week with an economist, if you haven't argued in a debate about it, if you haven't done an online course with somewhere, then you don't love it that much. You've probably spent more time with your iguana. So let me just convince me a bit more that this, so this is, these days, if you're asking me what we're doing as a school, as educators, we are, of course, trying to provide a brilliant support for A-levels. That's a tiny bit. We're also trying to create an environment and guide you and highlight and point and encourage all these other things that you can do 
to show that for yourself, you're doing something that's linked to this. If I'm doing an interview just for people come to the school, okay, yeah, you've done GCSEs, fine, yeah, you've done Duke of Edinburgh, fine, yeah, but did you do that because the school told you to? Yeah, okay. So you've done all that stuff. What, what have you done? And then somebody says, well, you know, I did this competition for myself. Okay, that's exciting. I read this for myself. Suddenly that gets interesting. So we'll come back to this, but the, the, the answer, the ultimate answer to how are you going to get into the, to the most competitive universities is, of course, you've got to have the right subjects. You've got to do well in the right subjects. You've got to show resilience, but you've got to show this stuff. This is the key. Why? What makes you different from every other student who's got A star, A star, A star? There aren't that many of them, so you've done brilliantly, well done, but what makes you different? And it's the other stuff. Um, so let's have a quick look at that. Personal statement. This is a UCAS slide. This is the bit where you sell yourself. And this is where you're going to show commitment, interest, other stuff. This is what it's all about. So at the end of your, not to say end of your life, that's not right. At the end of your life, up to the point when you apply, it's all going to come together on this. You've got 4,000 characters to show what you're made of. You're going to want to refine this and refine this and refine this. You're not going to write this in one go. You're really going to want to work on this because this is the thing of beauty. And you're probably going to want to show it to other people. Fine. Be prepared for completely different advice from everybody you show it to. Your mum's got one view. Your dad says, no, it's completely different. Your uncle says this, that. Everybody's got different views. It's your personal statement. But you're going to bring it together to show what it is that makes you stand out. What you're not going to do, you might start reading other people's. Fine. What you're not going to do is use their personal statement. These are all tracked. They go into a system, they'll know if you've plagiarized and it's game over. So you're not playing someone else's game, it's your personal statement. And you are going to do this sort of stuff. There isn't a spelling check or a grammar check, okay? I know it's minor, but it's the same when people are applying for jobs. They apply for a job, their CV looks great, except it's just got typos and mistakes. You just think, God, if you couldn't be bothered to get that right, I don't think you're going to be a very good employee. If your personal statement's got any silly little errors in it, well, you haven't taken that much care. So right down to the detail. Check, 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 check. Okay? So, <coughs> sorry. So you're going to market yourself. Who, who are you marketing yourself to? You want to study business? Who's your customer? <coughs> okay, you're, you're writing this to be looked at by the admissions team or the admissions tutor. That person may not be the same as other human beings. They are an admissions tutor for that course. If I am the professor of economics at wherever, my focus or my perspective on life could be very different from somebody else's. And therefore, your interest in Arsenal's performance against Liverpool may be fascinating to you, but may not be fascinating to that person whose life is about economics. And you've got to keep them in mind. How are you convincing them You've got a passion for the subject, you've got the skills, and you'd be a good student on their course. Because I've got a I've got loads of people applying. Why do I want to pick you? And it's it's not whether you're a good human being. It's not I have lots of friends and I like to watch films at the weekend. I don't care. Oh, well, I might care, but I probably don't care. I just want to know whether you're going to do you have any good at economics and why you're doing it and what you're going to gain from the course. So, okay, lots of too many words there. What, what's useful? Evidence you're well informed about the subject, okay? Not the A-level, but the degree. Why are you studying this degree? And that can be tricky because the degrees vary so much from university, but what is it that you think studying an economics degree will give you at the end? And it doesn't have to be. I don't know, what do you think, what do you think studying an economics degree will give you at the end? Anyone? It can be skills. I mean, let's take history. History is one of the best paid degrees in the UK. It's not because we love historians. I mean, you know, they're lovely. But it's the ability to research, to synthesize, to analyze, to put together arguments. It's those sorts of things. So why are you studying economics? Is it that you want to become good at you know, analyzing data, identifying patterns, making recommendations? Let's think through the other end of it. So evidence you know the subject, uh, evidence that you've got motivation, 
So membership of clubs, additional reading, relevant work experience. Have you done any of that? Uh, rate, uh, you know, I mean, we'll talk about it in a minute. Range of interests outside academic study. So this is what you, this is what you can say. I'd be a bit careful. I mean, voluntary work or whatever. It can show you're a rounded person. It can show really important skills, leadership, teamwork, collaboration. But don't just list these. What you don't want is to be descriptive. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. What have you gained from that? And how does it contribute to the degree? Go back to the customer idea. Um, and actually, I'm going to just go back about 50 slides. Go back to the customer idea and think about, whatever it was, that. Go to the website. They don't all do it. I mean, that, that's, that's, if I'm applying for economics and management at Oxford, if that's, if that's my goal, this is my customer. We are looking for candidates with an interest in and motivation for studying the organization of businesses. Right. Where in your personal statement are we showing that? We're interested in the capacity to construct and critically assess arguments. Where in your personal statement have you shown that? Is that through debating? Is that through the coursework you did in psychology? Where have you shown that skill? A willingness and ability to express ideas clearly. Yeah, I was in the debating this, that, and the other. Yes, I stood up on stage and sang this, that, and the other. On paper and orally. Yes, I entered the <coughs> national gymnast writing competition or something. I don't know. So, I mean, that, that, that's it. I mean, if I want to write a personal statement, I would cut and paste that. i go, right, show me that one, show me that one, show me that one, show me that one. Because if that's what the tutors are looking for, that's what you've got to do. The interview to Oxford, you would be interviewed, is not a test of existing knowledge. You're never going to go to it. If you do get an interview at these places, Oxford, Cambridge, they're not going to ask you about A-level or whatever you've studied at school. We know you're good at that we're going to ask you something you haven't thought about before to see how your brain works, okay? And, and you, will, you may well walk out of a, an interview going, that was awful. I, I walked out of an interview and I'd, I'd said to me at the beginning, 40 minutes later, I was proving it was complete nonsense. But what they were doing was just trying to see how the brain, whether I was flexible and could work stuff out and respond to new ideas. They don't want to test whether I can remember chapter 10. They know that, I'm gonna, you know, you're gonna get an A star. That's not, that's not interesting. But what, I mean, what more do you want? That, that's what they want you to show. There's your customer. Go, go and either you've done it already or you've got, I don't know how long you got, a year, two weeks, 10 years, whatever, to go and do it. And the, the earlier you can start, the longer you've got to go and say, right, what can I do in the coming two years to show that I solve problems logically? Is that through my maths? Is that through my extended project? Is that through my... I did set up a business at the age of eight and I did it by solving these problems. Let me show you what I did. But, but you've got to show it. Right, nearly there. Uh, okay. So here's, the, here's the, again, I think this is, uh, this is from one of the Oxford colleges, actually, I think. Um, this is not my advice, but I agree with it. Give yourself plenty of time. I don't know what stage you're at, but, but you know, if, if, if UCAS is still years away, it's fine. Still start thinking about it. Make sure punctuation, spelling, grammar are correct. It's detailed, but it is detailed. What, what do you think don't lie is? What does that mean? I know what it means, but... If you are going for the competitive courses and you do get to an interview, they are going to, they are going to pull apart your personal statement. They're probably going to get you to prove that some of the things you've argued are wrong. Okay, it's fine. But they are going to ask. If you say you have read War and Peace by Tolstoy in five languages, they're going to check you. And they're going to know it probably better than you do. So you don't put stuff down you haven't done. Far too dangerous. Um, avoid cliches. Uh, avoid it. You know, I, I, I avoid. I, I want to. I want to become a business person to make the world a better place. I'm sure you do. Bit of a cliche. Now work out what you really mean. Um, maintain a clear and professional tone. Uh, you'll get different advice. Some people tell you to do. You know, write a personal statement in the form of a poem or write it and refer to 20, you know, uh, uh, in a way that refers to 37 different currencies, uh, or, you know, they're just playing games or whatever. Just, uh, just be very careful. They're just, you're not trying to, they've seen it all before. Just get a, a, a clear personal statement that does what they ask you to do. Um, listing is a real problem. 
I want that award, that award, that award. You can put all the things you want on, on, on somewhere else in, in the document about qualifications. What have you got from it? What's the, I read this, big deal. Why else did you read? How did that compare with that? What did you learn from that that is different from what you thought from there? There's no point reading stuff. Compare, contrast, you know, analyze, evaluate. Um, don't, I'm fascinated by business. It's exciting, it's extraordinary. I love business. I, I, in, you know, these are all the words. Draft one, fine, no problem. But you're going to work at it, work at it, work at it to start pulling out some things. Uh, proofread, variety of context, yeah. Okay. Okay, nearly there. I promise you. Then you're, then you're free. If you go to Oxford, Cambridge, and other universities, um, they will talk about this all the time. Okay, and this is the other stuff that I've been going on about. The core, you've got the right A levels, you're doing well at your A levels. What's the other stuff? Lots of different names, academic enrichment, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, there are huge amounts of uh, um, online courses available. There are all sorts of web websites where you could, there's one called Future Learn, we use a lot. It's got lots of courses, some are paid for, some are free. Okay. If you are interested in economics or business, how interested are you? I, I, have you done an MIT course in something? Which bit of it really interests you? Is, is, it, is it business and ethics that you love? Is it business and managing people? Is it the, the, the economics of business? Um, so if, if, you, if you know, you told me you were passionate and all that sort of stuff, what have you read? So, so as I say, Future Learn is one in the UK. Um, just look for open online courses and, and, and see what's out there. And if nothing grabs you, if nothing makes you want to click, then probably you're not, this isn't the right subject. Maybe you should be doing something else. And that's fine. But what is it that you click? Because then you get into it and then you can talk about it and then you can click something else and say, right, I thought that was, you know, I thought the success of a business was all down to intellectual property. But now I've learned it's not actually because there's this case study and now I realize it's all to do with motivation. You can begin to do stuff. So reading and online courses, podcasts, so, you know, societies, all set them up yourself. You know, the, 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 the candidates who are going to win are the ones that say, yeah, there was nothing going on at school. So I set up the Economics Literature Society. And we started by reading I don't know, Friedman's statement of, of uh, 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 about you know monetarist economics and compared that with the current UK economic policy and laughed you know whatever but you're into it and, and you're driving something yourself so I can't remember which college that was but you know that's that's one of their slides um, this was from this isn't okay nearly done this is worth looking at just and there are others if you put in super curricular Oxford Cambridge super curricular Warwick University you'll probably find some really good links. This is one that, that's um, good. It's UNIV, University College, Oxford. UNIV, Ox, AK, UK. Uh, and they do a lot on supercurricular and what it is and why it's important. Um, and they give you lots of links. There, there are others. Um, but what they're saying is, if you start pushing your GCSEs and A-levels, I'm not saying forget them, they're, they're absolutely crucial, but you push them there for a minute and you start looking at this open space and doing some things, then A, you can double check whether it really is of interest to you or not. B, you've got something to write about. And C, you are the sort of person that we're looking for. Okay, I, I've had students say to me, I want to do law. And you say, right, the application is due in, in two weeks. And you've now decided you want to do law. We, you know, where the hell does this come from? This, this is all a bit sudden. And what, how do we build the evidence for this? Now, it doesn't mean you can't do it and all that sort of stuff. You know, there's always chances and opportunities and years out and stuff. But it just means if it really matters to you, if you're the person who is really going to thrive in this sort of environment, you are intellectually curious. And you will know that by whether you really want to do this or not and whether you start exploring this stuff. Example here. So, again, ignore me. Go to the website. See what they say. This is the University of Cambridge. This one was for law. They give you this. This is this is this is the starting point. You know, if you haven't done this, 50, 50 80 percent of the other applicants will have done, and that's not all you've got to do. This is just 
to start getting interested in whether you're going to like this subject or not. So this was the law. But, you know, here's some websites you should look at. Here's the video. Here's the podcast. Get stuck in. Go, go and do that. Okay? Um, management. Oxford. So these, I'm trying to think, I mean, I teach business. So I, Harvard Business Review, yeah, I've read that one. 10 must reads, done that one. Uh, predictably Irrational, this is brilliant about how kind of the weird way in which we make decisions. Fantastic book. I haven't read that one about Twitter. Um, the Goal, this is a really interesting one about um, how logistics and, and, and how supply chains work and all the problems. And it's, a, it's done as a story. It's a really good read. So these are just interesting reads. Um, this one, Michael Porter is like, you know, was one of the great analysts and has vied governments on, on competent, competitive strategy and stuff. So, so this list goes on. You know, you'll be dipping into this. What you don't want necessarily is to read the book that says how to make a million in 10 minutes or the 10 second guide to great billionaires. I'm not saying they might be useful. I mean, this one might be that hatching Twitter. I haven't read it. But just, you know, the, the, this is the sort of stuff. Now, if all you've done is that and you put that in your personal statement, probably... Um, then probably you'll find everyone else has as well, because they've all done the thing. But that's the starting point. When you start reading this one, hopefully you get excited by the Harvard Business Review. Harvard Business Review is amazing. And the stuff they write about is mind-blowingly brilliant. So get stuck in and then start reading your own and start commenting on those saying, actually, I think they missed out this one. Let me tell you why this is the 10 best reads. But then you're going to have a mind of your own. That's independent thinking. So... Lots of stuff out there. Uh, I, I, now, okay, I haven't read these. I have no idea whether these are good, but these are in all the bookshops in Oxford at the moment. I think these are Oxford University, you know, quick guides to. So again, if you want a quick introduction to some things, these aren't bad. Uh, and there'll be some kind of professors writing. I think they'll be fairly academic. Um, they also, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm giving Oxford as an example of all this. There, there are other universities out there. Um, Oxplore, I, actually, I didn't know this before, but this, is, this looks quite interesting. This, this is a website that just chucks out big questions. And it's just like, all right, is the internet bad? Blimey, I don't know. That, that's the kind of thing they'd ask you at an interview. And it's like, yeah, well, maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. So if you've got a, a group of like-minded people, in your school, in your network, whatever. Why don't you just, we, we have a thing at, at school called seminar and students just get together, those who want to, don't have to, and they get together, they go off, they go and read something, they, they, they watch a TED talk, they read something, they go to a lecture at the university, they come back and they just talk. And it's just incredible. And they're just having a chat about interesting stuff. If you're not, you know, do humans need religion? Blimey, who knows? Now in there, okay, that's more of a business, need, sorry, that's more of an economics one. Would you pay everyone the same? Discuss. Off you go, come back 20 minutes. That, that, that's, that's not bad as an exercise. And, and, you know, if you do it with your parents and see what they say and just debate it and discuss it. And that, that's, you know, if I was writing about that on a personal statement, suddenly it's like, okay, this is interesting. What's, what's this person arguing? So, I don't know, the UK at the moment, there's lots of, uh, okay, UK yesterday was talking about um, lifting the cap on bankers' pay. You know, should, should there be a limit to how much somebody could be paid? Is it the role of government to limit pay? This is quite interesting stuff. So that would show me independent thought. If that sort of thing, if I then went and did a project on that, well, that's quite interesting. Okay, so that's law. We don't want law. We're done on that one. Uh, done on that one. That's all law. That was all the same sort of thing about uh, unpicking the statement. That's all we don't want. That's all law. Oh, that's economics and management. So again, same, same sort of stuff. La probably the last thing. This is University of Oxford. Lists the things they want. Arguments, this is what we saw before. Independence of thought, analyzing logically, and the interview won't test knowledge. Okay? Most universities somewhere will set out their criteria. That's your customer. That's what you work to. Uh, okay. And then this is just to highlight what I kind of started with pretty early on. This is Oxford again. Economics and management is taught with the Saeed Business School. So that's right in the center of Oxford. It is not a business studies degree, okay? So it's not studying what goes on within business and marketing and finance and HR. It's, it's management and economics. It's an academic subject. You'll be learning through traditional academic means. You won't be doing, we might do a bit, but you won't be doing, let's do a team presentation and we'll be marked on how we work together as a team. You won't be doing that if you do it there. 
Okay, and that again is just highlighting the importance of small print um, so that we we understand what we're going for. Right, so time, 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 time. You need a lot of time on this. This is not a quick fix. Build your CV in relation to customers. And essentially, you've got to commit. This is the, if, you, if you really want competitive courses, they are competitive. So you've got to stand out. And that means putting in the time and effort. Okay. I think we're probably done. Unless, but what questions? You know what questions? Because I've talked a huge amount. And you've listened a huge amount. There must be something you... you No? Yeah. Sorry, that you did what? Sorry, I got terrible hearing. Okay, so this is great. Can I read that out? Is that okay? Can I can I say on a personal statement? I wrote comments on economics on Instagram posts. Um, what do we think? What does the audience think? Yeah. The, the originator and the, the, the people that joined in the conversation yeah. there. Yeah. That, that could be interesting. Yeah, but I am interested because what, what are you doing? So what, what, what is it that people are talking about? What, what are you putting on there? What's the debate about? What's your view? So that is potentially really interesting because <coughs> it's not passing the exam. Um, <coughs> t tell me a bit more about it. What, what, what were you doing? Oh, you got me, your voice is gone as well. Um, but it, immediately there's a spark there. <coughs> and I'm beginning to think, what, what, are, you, what are you thinking about? <coughs> what are you contributing to? So potentially great. But if you just leave it, it's just descriptive. So at the moment, I don't know enough to know what it is you're, what's going on. Because it could be a, a load of kind of complaints about the UK government. And we're just telling the UK government they're, they're all fools. Not... Yeah, but if it's economic critique, it's fantastic. So great, yeah. Anyone else? Where, where are people, are, are, are they, are you about to, are you writing your personal statement already? How, how far away have you got? What, what, what? Zero. zero, what does that mean? You've got zero minutes, you mean? But when do you have to send it? You've got to send it soon. 12. Okay, that's great. Okay, well, so, so, you're, so you're beginning to get involved in Instagram, whatever. You've got a year ahead of you. You're clearly interested in economics. So is there, is there an economic society at school or anything like that? No, but maybe you could start a blog or maybe you start a, a, a magazine or, or just a, a group of reading. Much more powerful if you do it. So if you join a school society that the school runs, Great, but much more powerful if you're doing something like that. Loads of opportunity to do the reading, no problem at all. Yeah, you're fine. You got to get, get stuck in. Anyone else? No, are we done? Yeah. Go back to decision. Decision. Yes, right. About which decision? Which bit? Yes. Decision about the university, or yes, decision. Uh, trying to find which one it is. That one or not? Next one. Decision. Uh, I'm just trying to think which one. De decision about which? About yes. There are three bullet points. Oh, on right. the left and three on the right. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, right right. At the beginning. Yeah, sorry. Ever? Yeah, yeah. I'll get there. Sorry, I'll get there. Okay. That one. Yes, right. Apologies, sorry. Assume, assume you are the reviewer. Could you give me the score or percentage of personal, personal statement and qualification and reference in terms of percentage? Ah, no, sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, great, great question. That's, that's a great question. Um, and, and there is no for, for this. I don't think there's. I don't think. I might be wrong actually, but I don't think there's any equation at the back if there is it will be determined by each university or each department so i don't think i think it's straightforward to say you know 30 percent, 30 percent, 30 percent what what is important is how they fit together 
So thinking about, say, uh, you're not, you shouldn't get involved in the referent. I think as a student, you have the right to see it when you get to university, but you're not trying to influence the person writing the reference and put pressure on them. That's all. all right. but, but what is important is that, that these things are kind of linked or, or they, 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 they what? They kind of support each other uh, and they're not telling completely different stories, obviously. Um, sometimes here, so, so for example, um, it might be that, that I say that, that the student maybe hasn't written enough about, in my view, about how they have come abroad, adapted so well, been independent. Maybe that the student hasn't written about, you know, at our school, students organize their own time quite a lot. They're very independent thinkers. And so it might be here that if it isn't in there, I can pick it up here and, and, and support more with, with, with that. So, so those have to kind of work together. Um, as it comes in, basically a university, this is in some senses a checklist, isn't it? it, it it's, if you haven't got the right qualifications, then you probably don't go through to the next stage. So remember there was one for UCL that said, you know, you've got to have grade six in English and math. If you haven't got grade six, you, you just don't get passed to the next stage. So that's that's just a filter. So this will this will immediately filter applications to say, are they in the right sort of area? Yeah. Then this is going to be very powerful because that's the person I'm going to be working with. This person could be almost a professional reference, right? This is who I want to understand. But that's why it's got to feel personal. So I think I'd say that gets them in the you're applying for economics and management. I, I need you to have A, A, B. Yeah, you predict it. Your, your GCSEs look good. You're predicted A, A, A. Right, you're in the game. So that gets you in the game. I'm going to read that and be interested in that. And I'm going to be interested in the, in the relationship between that one and that one. And, and whether I say they, they, they think they are giving me a good overview of that student. You, you, mean, you mean that uh, these are like a subjective uh, decision? Oh the, yeah. From the admission team, one one more one more indication. Admission team are working as uh, one team, or oh, they they assign well, the professor to, they, they to will, do everything. Yeah. No, there's and probably people, by their own. The, the, the process will vary from university. So so we'll get some universities that have a central team, and they are they are they are you know, making all the decisions. In other ones, they farm it out to the departments, and the departments make the decision. But if they do that, they'll do it in a way in which they, they are considering all the applications on the same basis, but ultimately, if I'm reading a personal statement, it is subjective. It, it, it's an interpretation of what that student's strengths are. Um, okay. You know, I mean, that, 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 that's, that, that's, you know, um, and, the, the, you know the, the, so, and that's why carefully crafting that is important. It isn't something you rush and just write. Uh, I mean, we would expect, oh, I don't know. You're not writing this once. You should be writing and rewriting. And doesn't I mean I begin with a personal statement by just you just just write anything. You just get a load of words on a page. You've written far too much. It's far too descriptive. It's all over the place. But you've got something to start working with. And then you're going to edit and edit and edit. And then you're going to go back to what the customer said. And you're going to go well that bit's missing. How do I show that? And, and the, the earlier you can start on that, you begin to identify the gaps that you've got to fill. In the, in the, you know you. I mean, I didn't do this, lots of students don't do this, but you could start now looking at what your personal statement looks like because then you've got a year to fill in. If you don't need more of that, I've already got lots of evidence of that. Let's, let's have a look at that bit. That's what I've got to work on. Then you've got you know, 12 months or, or, or you know, a year and a half to start doing it. So, so again, that's all in the, the planning stage. Because that, sorry, that was a very, I'm not sure that answered your question particularly, but, but um, I suppose it's the combination... If those aren't right, you, you won't be considered, but then the combination of those, those things. Well, okay, I'll say it again. The, the, the reference probably is explaining, it's giving a context. So let's say, um, uh, let's say you've done five GCSEs because the school you're at, that's the curriculum. That needs explaining because other schools might be doing eight. Now, it's nothing the matter with it, but it needs explaining. That's better coming from the reference than it is from the student. Let's say I've had students who've had, you know, 
a, a relatively average background and they come and they choose the right subjects and they study economics for the first time at A-level and they study business for the first time and they are just amazing. And, and they, they are going to go on to the top universities. But the university needs to understand what's happened to take them from that because that, that looks okay, doesn't look great. But you're now telling me they're going to get A-stars. How's that happen? Now that might be explained a bit by the student, but that's going to have more weight if, if the referee is explaining that, which is, I don't know, they, they've developed the study skills, they've got inspired by the subject, they've done da, da, da. Um, So, so th this, this can give maybe the context and explain and support those sorts of things. Yeah? Would I ask about scholarship? Yeah. yeah. What, what thing should I do to get a scholarship more easily? Um, don't know is the answer. So again, it will depend very much on each university and what scholarships they've got and what their criteria are. There won't be a, a, a blanket, you know, this is, this is what you do. So again, if you go to the university websites, they, they always end, go through UCAS, but they end.ac.uk and look on their international admissions pages there. But, but it'll vary. And there, there are scholarships out there because they want, they want great students. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, Chris, I apologize that the question isn't like 100% related. That's fine. Is this though like a uh, future, especially for international students in the UK who have a degree in the humanities? Is, like, is there still somewhere for you know, people with a humanities degree to go? Sorry, I don't understand. In what sense? In what... Are there um, good job opportunities for international students? who have just graduated with like an undergraduate in something like philosophy compared to literature and things like that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And sorry, that, no, sorry, that's a great question. So, so again, study economics and business or whatever, if that's what really interests you. But, but in, in the UK, um, often the, the degree is, is, a, is an opportunity to gain skill. Not something like medicine, obviously. But, but as I say, you know, history... Um, has typically been one of the best, has led to some of the best employment and best paid jobs. Because a history graduate, a bit like law, is reading huge amounts, synthesizing it, coping with time pressure, putting together logical arguments, giving presentation. I mean, those skills, a philosophy graduate is, is you know, the, the, the skills behind philosophy and the logic and the uh, building the argument is it, incredible. So, so, you know, what I'm interested in is how does your brain, how does your brain work? What can you cope with? What can you do under pressure? All those sorts of things. Whether that's because you've studied philosophy or international relations or anything, anthropology, you know, in itself is not necessarily the key thing. Do, does that make sense? So I hope I'm answering your question. To go into management in a top business, they wouldn't necessarily need you to do a management degree. What they want is a, a evidence of high performance in, with the right skill set at a competitive university where they know the standard is high. And, and that would, and because they, in many cases, they're going to put you on their own training program anyway. You, you know, uh, so, so that, does, that, does that help? Yeah. My, my daughter, my daughter is studying pre-law and biology. Yeah. Yeah, I, I be, that's fine. I'd be interested, obviously, in the, the overall profile and these other things. Um, I'm interested in the maths, uh, and, and I mean, I'm interested in all of them, but the, the maths will be key to, to economics, I think. Um, business is fine. Um, it, yeah, it's fine. But was that these are the A levels? Yeah, yeah. Again, if you, if you go back to that, that website, I didn't, I didn't put it up for you, you go back to the Informed Choices, the Russell Group website, you'll see that for most degrees, there aren't essential ones you have to have done. Yeah? So, so again, so at A level, people will pick up business, they've never studied it before, they'll pick up economics, they've never studied it before, they pick up philosophy, never, and that's an A level. Degree, again, uh, for a lot of degrees, people have not studied an A level in that. No, that's absolutely fine. You know, those are, those, are, those are different. You know, business studies is, is a, as an A level, is a debating evaluative subject. Maths is your logic, and biology has got many things, but it's also got huge about the content. So it's showing me a range of skills. Is that okay? 
You've been very patient. Right? You're probably exhausted, but thank you for your time. I'm sorry again for being late, but it's been. Um, you... If my son wants to become a philosopher, uh, yeah. what sort of things can house the journeys that's going through his life? And being um, Asian that wants to teach philosophy in England, yeah. how hard would that be? I have no idea, but I'm sure it's perfectly possible. <laughs> um, what, what stage is he at at the moment? Oh, right. <laughs> well, maybe, I mean, if, we, if we're finished now, we can so I'll hang around and talk to anybody who wants to, but that's an interesting conversation. We can, we can have a look at some of the websites and see what they're telling us, but, okay. Okay, is that all right? Thank you for your time. Thank you, and uh, I hope you have a good rest of the weekend. Any questions, just let us know. We'll, we'll stay around. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. You okay? <laughs> you look exhausted. <laughs>